Hey everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and today we are going to talk about things we wish we had known before we went on a Royal Caribbean cruise. These are important for you if you're new to Royal Caribbean, if you have been on Royal Caribbean before and are going back, or maybe even if you're a cruise veteran, there is stuff for you here. So let's get started. First up, you should read an old cruise compass before you go on your cruise. When trying to pick the right ship for you and sailing, you likely have questions about what there is to do on board. In fact, the available activities may play a major role in which ship you end up booking. There's no way to know in absolute terms what your upcoming Royal Caribbean cruise will or will not offer because, frankly, Royal Caribbean does not publish its activities or entertainment schedule in advance. But what you can do to learn about what to expect on your sailing is to consult a past cruise compass to see what was available on those similar sailings. A cruise compass is Royal Caribbean's daily newspaper that's distributed to guests on each day of the cruise. Generally speaking, Royal Caribbean sailings on a particular ship do not change that much from week to week in terms of the activities or entertainment offered. There will be some discrepancies, like maybe the movies that are offered are going to be changing up from week to week, but the bottom line is they will show movies, and they will show a lot of the shows, and it gives you an opportunity by looking at these old cruise compasses to give you a good ballpark of expectations on what you can plan around, and that way you know what kind of entertainment is offered and about how often it's shown. Next, you're going to want to definitely pre-purchase some of the things before your cruise because it's going to save you a lot of money. Royal Caribbean offers a lot of packages these days, and you know whether it's a drink package or an internet package or a dining package, they're all really tempting, but a lot of folks don't take the opportunity to buy them before the cruise, and besides being able to split up the total cost of your cruise, if you pre-purchase it before your cruise, it will save you money because oftentimes Royal Caribbean offers a discount if you purchase select pre-cruise purchases instead of waiting to book them on board the ship. Not only is it going to save you money by pre-purchasing, it's also going to save you time because you're not going to be taking time once on board the ship to stand in line and book it. Now, there's a variety of packages that are offered. First and foremost, the unlimited drink packages, the beverage packages. Royal Caribbean offers a lot of great drink package options. The essence is really, really popular. In fact, a lot of people love them. And by purchasing before your cruise, there is going to be a pre-cruise discount in almost every situation that we've seen. The exact discount amount, uh, as well as the exact drink package price that you start off with, will vary from ship to ship and sailing to sailing. If you're new to Royal Caribbean or a gold member in the Crown and Anchor Society, you're almost always better off financially to pre-purchase the drink package before your cruise instead of buying it on board the ship. It should be noted that if you are a member of Royal Caribbean's customer loyalty program, Crown and Anchor Society, you are entitled to onboard discounts that cannot be combined with pre-cruise discounts. So if you're wondering if it's more lucrative to wait to buy on board with your Crown and Anchor discount, it depends on your status level and what discount you're seeing online. Generally speaking, if you're Diamond Plus or Pinnacle, waiting to purchase on board is a good idea. But Diamond members, it's more of a wash financially, and Emerald and Below will have definitely have a benefit by pre-purchasing. In terms of internet packages, just like the drink packages, Royal Caribbean offers a discount to internet package purchased before the cruise. These packages are good for the duration of your cruise and are limited per device, not per person. So what that means is you can actually share the internet packages among your friends and family. It's just you're purchasing how many devices can be logged in at one particular time. So if you and your spouse want to use one device package, basically one of you has to log in you know, to use it, and then when you're done, log out and let the other person log in with that device. And this is unlimited device, so you can bring your iPad, your iPhone, your Kindle, and all any other devices that use the internet. Just to keep in mind that you're limited by how many devices can be logged in at one particular time. Now, just like the drink packages, Royal Caribbean offers a discount on its internet packages to returning guests. The amount varies depends on your Crown and Anchor society level, but Emerald and Below should consider pre-purchasing. Now, in terms of dining packages, there is not usually a discount offered on dining packages. So deciding to pre-purchase a dining package or waiting until you're getting on board the ship largely depends on how important it is to you to break up the total cost of the cruise. By pre-purchasing a dining package online, you'll avoid having the cost on your end of the cruise bill. Financial flexibility is always a really nice perk. When it comes to individual specialty restaurants, in general, the price of a specialty restaurant online is the same as on board. The exception is when Royal Caribbean runs a cruise planner sale, in which case pre-booking a specialty restaurant online is usually cheaper. Ultimately, the decision to pre-purchase a specialty restaurant or not depends on how important these two factors are to you. Number one, your desire to pre-purchase and break up the total cost of your cruise. And number two, your desire to dine at a specific restaurant at a specific date or time. 
Now, for spa services, deciding to book a spa service before or after your cruise is not always a crystal clear decision, primarily because the spa services offered online do not always match up with the total services offered on board your Royal Caribbean ship. Spa services are often discounted on the cruise planner with a discount percentage depending on the day and time you select for your service. The most lucrative discounts are usually earlier in the cruise, especially on port days. The challenge in figuring out whether to purchase or not purchase a spa service before your cruise is each day of your cruise will have some spa special offered on board the ship. These spa specials are usually combination offers, which are not offered as an option in the cruise planner before the cruise. In my experience, the cruise planner offers individual services, which are good for those that just want a massage or just want a service or just want a therapy. Royal Caribbean offers an onboard discount on individual spa services, but that will depend again on your Crown and Anchor Society status level. For shore excursions, any pre-cruise discounts manifest themselves during a pre-cruise planner sale most often. Outside of a sale, the price of a Royal Caribbean shore excursion is often the same online or on board. The primary reason to book a shore excursion before your cruise is not necessarily to lock in a discount, but to reserve a spot. With the exception of spa services, other pre-cruise purchases do not sell out. With shore excursions, tours are limited to a certain headcount, and as a result, popular choices can sometimes sell out very quickly. In the Caribbean, shore excursions selling out is not very common, but if there's a tour experience you absolutely want to see or do, then you ought to pre-purchase it to ensure a spot for you. The bottom line, though, is in terms of anything you're pre-purchasing, Royal Caribbean usually runs a cruise planner sale every four to six weeks or so. Regardless of which purchase we're talking about, it's always a good idea to check on the prices of what's being offered in the cruise planner, especially when a new cruise planner sale is available. The good news is anything you purchase in the cruise planner can be actually canceled and rebooked with no penalty. So if you book something today and next week the price drops, you should know that you can cancel at any time and rebook and take advantage of that new price of these cruise planner purchases. The next thing we wish we'd known was not to skip the specialty restaurants on a Royal Caribbean ship. Royal Caribbean specialty restaurants, which have an additional cost to dine there, are among the best dining locations at sea, and quite frankly, you're missing out if you don't try one or, or four of them. You can always dine at the complimentary restaurants, but working in a specialty restaurant on a few nights of your cruise can really give you a nice change of pace and exposure to cuisines that aren't available elsewhere for free on board your ship. Royal Caribbean specialty restaurants are wonderful, and it's hard to go wrong at any of them, so it's worth spending a little bit more to eat there a few times while on your cruise. Don't fear the dress codes. I know it sounds scary, and the idea of having to dress up on your Royal Caribbean cruise sounds like the worst possible thing, and already you're starting to scratch at your neck because it feels itchy and constricting and just the worst possible thing. Who would want to do that, right? Good news, the dress codes aren't nearly as bad as you think, even though on maybe one or two nights of your cruise, there is something called formal night. Don't worry. Formal night is an evening where the dress code at the main dining room is more upscale. For men, this means collared shirts with nice pants, like a tie and a jacket are optional. And for ladies, it's a nice cocktail dress or a dress or something else similar. A typical Royal Caribbean seven-night cruise will feature two formal nights, so be sure to pack accordingly. Keep in mind that formal night attire dress only applies to the main dining room and nowhere else on the ship. So if you don't eat the main dining room on formal night, you don't have to dress up. If you want to go walk into anywhere else on the ship other than the dining room, the dress code does not apply there for the formal night. It's totally different. The first formal night will usually be on the second night of the sailing, whereas the second formal night will vary. depends on the, your sailing, usually between the fifth and or six nights of a seven-night cruise. Shorter cruises, like five nights or less, will only have one formal night, and cruises 14 nights or longer will have three formal nights. Now, of course, the inevitable question is, what do you wear on formal night? I mentioned some things earlier, but you know how formal is formal? It's not that bad. Really, it's a relative term, first and foremost. What that means is, on other nights of the cruise, you're going to have various levels of casual dress code in the main dining room. Formal night just means something nicer than that. Certainly for guys, a polo shirt and a nice pair of slacks will cut will cut it. For ladies, I mean, pretty much, you know, a blouse with a nice pair of pants will work. A cocktail dresses, dresses, anything, guys, kind of skirts. You're all good on that. Really, when you're talking in the dining room for dinner, you're talking about dress 
dressing up for something that maybe is going to be nicer than you'd wear to the pool deck, certainly. And it's a relative term. It is not to say you need to wear a tuxedo or ball gowns or recreate your senior prom. It doesn't have to get to that level, so you shouldn't have to worry about it that much. And again, if you want to just skip formal night in the dining room, there are especially restaurants that have a, usually a more relaxed dress code to them. Or just skip it all together and go to a place like the Windjammer or some of the other complimentary buffet, grab-and-go style restaurants that are going to be available on your Royal Caribbean cruise and enjoy your meals there, and you can wear whatever you want. Next up, you definitely want to book your Royal Caribbean cruise as early as you can. The reason being, because it's going to get you the best possible price. If there's one mantra that everyone taking a Royal Caribbean cruise should know, it is to book your cruise as early as possible. In general, the best prices are found the earlier one books a cruise. Royal Caribbean sells its cruises largely based on the concept of supply and demand. When a sailing is first offered, supply is at its highest because no one has purchased a stateroom yet. As time progresses, more and more staterooms are reserved and stateroom inventory drops, so the price increases conversely. The earlier you book, the best chance you'll have at getting a good price on your cruise. When we say early, it essentially means as early as you can make it. Royal Caribbean puts its itineraries on sale as much as two years in advance of the sailing. And while that may be too far in advance for you to plan your vacation, the earlier you can book your cruise, the better for that bottom line price. And if you live in a country like the United States, Canada, or Australia, you can actually take advantage of repricing your cruise because if there's a price drop between now or when you book your cruise and final payment date, you can actually reprice the cruise all the way up until that final payment date 90 days before your sailing, which means you're pretty much going to lock yourself into getting the best possible price for your Royal Caribbean cruise. Last minute deals are not really a thing anymore. Back in the day, that used to be a thing where you could wait till like the last couple weeks before sailing and take advantage of really desperation on the cruise line. But Royal Caribbean cruises sell so well these days and ships are sailing so full that Royal Caribbean does not have to resort to offering last minute discounts anymore. And as a result, if you wait for the last minute, you're probably going to pay a much higher price and also you're going to suffer from a lack of variety of choices for stateroom in which you want to stay in because you waited to the last minute. So again, the best strategy is definitely to book your Royal Caribbean cruise as early as you can. Another thing to know before you go on a Royal Caribbean cruise is to choose your cruise ship based on what's important to you. Royal Caribbean has, at the time of this recording, 25 ships in its fleet, and while they share a core experience across all of them, the ships in Royal Caribbean's fleet vary from classes of ships and even between individual vessels. This means you need to be aware of what each ship offers and which features each ship you are considering has and if it's important to you. In short, Royal Caribbean breaks up its many ships into classes. Ship classes are groupings of ships that share a common structure and layout. Think of ship classes like types of cars. You have pickup trucks, sedans, minivans, etc. Within each type of cars, you then have individual car models. This is fairly similar to how Royal Caribbean categorizes its cruise ships. In addition to just size and tonnage, each ship tends to include similar entertainment, activities, and onboard amenities. What you want to do is think about which features you want to have on your cruise ship and then see if that class has what you want. If water slides are important, then an Oasis or Freedom class ship might be a good pick. But if you want a nursery, then skip Majesty of the Seas. Again, using a good travel agent can greatly assist with narrowing down the choices for you. You should also be aware that while ships within each class are similar, Royal Caribbean has been adding new features to some existing ships over the years that have greatly differentiated them more than in the past. Basically, do not assume one ship in the class is identical to another ship in the class, especially on some of the newer Royal Caribbean ships. We definitely want to let you know to feel free to ask if the food selections you're seeing on board your Royal Caribbean ship aren't exactly what you want. In fact, feel free to ask in general if you've got questions. Don't just suck it up and take it as it is what it is. Royal Caribbean offers some incredible food all across its ships, but sometimes you might want something cooked or prepared a little bit differently. Perhaps you have a dietary restriction or preference that you'd like to adhere to, and while there may be some options available just by looking, perhaps you'd like something a little bit different or you're feeling limited. Talk to your wait staff about getting those kinds of things taken care of. Generally speaking, as long as Royal Caribbean has the ingredients and you make a request in advance, they can absolutely accommodate so many different requests, whether it's just something prepared slightly differently or, again, adhering to a dietary restriction. Really, the name of the game is to ask. Now, one of the things you want to do is definitely give yourself enough time. Don't show up to the meal you want to eat at and then make the request. What you want to do, actually, in, in ideally, is give the wait staff at least 24-hour notice. So 
certainly on the first day of your cruise, talk to your head waiter and tell them, you know, about the kind of dietary restrictions or kind of foods you're interested in doing. Sometimes they may be able to point out to you options that exist that are going to be off, you know, of the bat that are available to you. Otherwise, they can definitely make the request. And if they have the ingredients and it's not too complicated, they'll absolutely be able to accommodate you. And this can be even something just kind of foods that you enjoy. As an example, I love Indian curry. I don't have a specific dietary restriction that makes me eat that way, but I always request it in the main dining room on my Royal Caribbean ships, and they're happy to bring that. So definitely don't feel bashful or embarrassed to go in and ask for these kind of requests. They want to make you happy. They want you to have an awesome cruise and certainly never leave hungry. Another thing we really, really want to make sure you know is you don't need to get an unlimited drink package. A lot of people going on a Royal Caribbean cruise find the idea of getting a drink package quite attractive, primarily due to the convenience and potential value offered by the drink packages. However, a drink package is not an option for everyone, and there are some great alternatives to getting a drink package that will not break your budget while still allowing you to enjoy your favorite drinks on board. Don't get us wrong. A Royal Caribbean drink package works for a lot of people who really enjoy the options it provides, but... We also hear from a number of readers who like to enjoy a few drinks, but fear a drink package will not be financially viable for them. As a result, we think that avoiding a drink package is not a mistake at all, and there are plenty of great free drinks available on board your Royal Caribbean ship. In fact, Royal Caribbean provides all of its guests on all of its cruises a few different drinks throughout the day that are included in your cruise fare. These drinks include tap water, milk, tea, coffee, as in regular and decaf, lemonade, iced tea, hot tea, flavored waters, juices at breakfast, not fresh squeezed, but out of a box, and hot chocolate via instant packets. These drinks are available throughout the cruise at a number of locations, so there will always be somewhere to get something to drink for free. Now, if you're looking to avoid the drink package as a way to kind of save some money, but you still want to enjoy your drinks, a couple strategies that really work. Number one, drink in port. You're going to be visiting a lot of places, and if you're going in the Caribbean or some other countries around the world where the cost of living is a bit lower than your home country, oftentimes you can find some great drink specials over in port. In fact, the port people know that they're competing against the cruise line for drinks. Oftentimes, you will find a lot of bars or vendors selling drinks at a much greater discount compared to the same kind of beverage on board your Royal Caribbean ship. While you're on your ship, though, take advantage of drink specials on board. In this age of the drink package, it's often lost in the discussions that Royal Caribbean runs a lot of drink specials on board their cruise throughout the duration of your sailing. Even before drink packages became a popular choice, drink specials were an option offered for years. The key to finding a drink special is to spend a little time seeking them out. Drink specials are most often advertised via two means, a sign at a bar or maybe an ad in the cruise compass. Some drink specials are for certain times, like happy hour, while others are offered for part of the cruise. The key is to seek them out, take advantage of the drink specials to ensure out-of-pocket costs are lower. One of the oldest and yet most well-known drink specials is the drink of the day. As an example, this is a cocktail picked out every day of your cruise that is reduced in price, usually about 25% or so off the normal price. The drink of the day is a great choice for saving on drinking costs and something offered throughout the day at every single bar you'll ever visit on board your ship. And also, you need to take advantage of the option of bringing your own wine. Did you know you can bring up to two bottles of wine on board your Royal Caribbean ship per stateroom? Yeah, it's available. Each bottle of wine may be up to 750 milliliters in size and should be brought in the luggage you carry onto the ship. Do not put the wine in the luggage you hand over to the porters on embarkation day. Now, wine lovers will be able to bring a couple bottles of wine to their favorite particular brand or type of wine because it will save them a lot of money comparing that same bottle of wine on board the ship. Moreover, bringing your own wine means you'll save money on the total bar tab during your cruise. So it's important to be aware that Royal Caribbean will charge you a corkage fee for personal wines opened at any restaurant or lounge on board. Even with that corkage fee, though, you'll still save a significant amount of money compared to purchasing a bottle of wine on board. If you open that bottle of wine in your stateroom, there's no additional charge for that. You can do that on your own. Also, I'd have to point out that even when you do have your bottle of wine opened in a bar or restaurant, In my experience, about half the time, they never charge you the corkage fee anyway. I don't know. I don't question it. But it is something to be aware of that the corkage fee does exist. Now that I said all that, if you are getting a Royal Caribbean Unlimited Alcohol Package, you definitely want to take advantage of a couple of these great strategies for maximizing the value. Number one, if you make a drink order of any kind, always request an extra bottle of water with the order. 
It is easy to get a bit of tunnel vision when it comes to using Royal Crane's unlimited alcohol package. In addition to alcohol, the package provides unlimited soft drinks, fresh squeezed juices, coffees, and bottled water. The bottled water in particular is very useful. Not only is it a good idea to drink a lot of water while enjoying alcohol, many of us have learned that lesson in college, but stockpiling bottles of water in your stateroom means you have a supply to use on shore excursions. When you order an alcoholic beverage, in our experience, the waiters never have an issue with also providing you with a bottle of water as part of the same order. This means you can take a few bottles back to your room for use on board or on shore. While you can always just order a bottle of water to bring on shore, having a small reserve of bottled water means you can easily grab as much as you need. This is very helpful with families or large groups. Also, when you bail up to that bar to order a drink, don't just ask for the drink itself. Ask for the drink and specify the kind of liquor. So instead of saying, can I please have a pina colada, mention a brand of rum to go in that pina colada or the type of vodka that you want to have in your martini. Because the deluxe beverage package includes many types of liquor, including some of the most desirable brands. Choices in liquor can be subjective, but higher quality brands of liquor are typically smoother, stronger, or just plain taste better. So when ordering a drink, be sure to specify what you want in it. Like, can I please have a pina colada with crack and rum? And last, did you know you can use your unlimited alcohol packages at specialty restaurants? Many Royal Caribbean specialty restaurants have their own menu of cocktails that were created specifically for that restaurant and may not be available elsewhere on the ship. Part of the appeal of the unlimited alcohol package is the opportunity to try new drinks without fear of wasting money on something you do not enjoy. Since the unlimited alcohol package works at all specialty restaurants, you can feel free to try one of the restaurant's drinks. You might even discover something you really love. If the restaurant has a special cocktail, usually it's on the drink menu that also includes wines and other beverages on board. Specialty restaurants with particularly good drinks on their own include Sabor, Jamie's Italian, 150 Central Park, and Wonderland. Another tip you need to know before you go on your Royal Caribbean cruise is get to the port that your cruise is leaving from on embarkation day early. And I mean that actually in two ways. First of all, arrive to your port city early. When it comes to travel, there's always going to be certain factors involved in the trip that you have no control over. Weather, canceled flights, flat tires, getting sick. If you ask seasoned travelers how they get around these obstacles, the answer is often to give yourself more time. Instead of arriving to your departure city on the day of your cruise, get in there early. By planning to arrive to your departure port at least one day early, you assure yourself that a travel delay will not impact your ability to get on the cruise. Having an extra day or two provides a buffer to account for travel delays. You really don't want to be that person in the airport losing their mind because the latest delay means the entire vacation is in jeopardy. As an added bonus, by arriving in your embarkation port at least a day early, that means you get to start your vacation sooner. And in many cases, the port you are departing from has its own cultural and historical attractions that you can explore. Now, while we're talking about arriving early, if you subscribe to the theory that time is money, then you definitely want to arrive to your embarkation port early on the day of your cruise. By arriving early to the terminal, you'll beat the big crowds that descend upon the cruise terminal later in the day, and you also get the added benefit of having some extra time on board the ship. Royal Caribbean may send you an email about boarding times, but those are mostly suggestions and not enforced at all. If you followed our previous advice about arriving to your cruise port early, then likely your hotel will have a checkout time in the early part of the morning, which is the perfect excuse to head to your cruise port. If you're wondering what time constitutes early, we're talking about sometime between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. The earlier you arrive on our vacation day, the earlier you will board the ship. And the price you paid for the cruise is the same, whether you got on board the ship at 11 a.m. or 2 p.m., so you may as well get the most time possible on board your ship. And finally, when you're talking about planning your shore excursions, things you're going to do in the ports you're going to be visiting on your Royal Caribbean cruise, you should know that shore excursions can be exhausting. So plan breaks and try to alternate intense itineraries with more casual days in port. What I mean is if you're going to do on one day a tour of a famous historical city or walk around a bunch of you know ruins or something like that, make sure the next day may perhaps either have a sea day or if you're doing back-to-back port days, give yourself time to kind of relax by the beach or just take it easy in the morning. If you try to go back-to-back with lots of heavily walking or intense shore excursions, it can just lead to total burnout and not really quite happy feet and family members, quite honestly. So what you want to do is definitely plan for breaks. Take it easy. And this can also be applied, honestly, to the entire cruise experience. 
you know, there's lots to do on your Royal Caribbean ship, right? You're going to see all the amazing activities and, and things that you can do and places you can eat. And it looks like amazing and you want to do it all because you want to make sure you get take advantage of obviously the vacation you're paying for. But downtime isn't a problem and shouldn't be avoided. In fact, having downtime on your Royal Caribbean cruise is a great way to actually relax and enjoy your vacation. So while there's plenty going on, both onshore and on board, make sure you give yourself plenty of time to enjoy it all and also recover from it all. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate you. Be sure to let us know in the comments what your tips are and what you wish you knew before you went on a Royal Caribbean cruise because people are really going to benefit from your notes in the comments. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the great stuff in videos like this one. This has been Matt Hotchberg from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again soon.